Because if there was one thing I would say that Fatima is about, it's devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We will come back to that again and again and again, that God wills to establish devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And it was on this day, June 13th, that she first revealed that to the world, and that she first revealed her Immaculate Heart, and the children saw it. So this was sort of something really never before seen. Before, you'd had some great saints like St. Louis de Montfort or St. John Eudes, who were, if you will, apostles of the Immaculate Heart, and laying the ground a couple centuries before for the devotion. But now our Blessed Mother comes and gives it herself. Uh, and so this is a pivotal day, because now she really reveals her designs, I should really say, God's designs for the world. Part of what she says, there's more, but she reminds that, yes, she'll take Jacinta and Francisco soon to heaven. Francisco dies in 1919, Jacinta in 1920. You, Lucia, however, are to stay here a longer time. Jesus wants to use you to make me known and loved. That really was Lucia's mission. He wants to establish the devotion of my immaculate heart in the world. I promise salvation to those who embrace it. And we should pause and ponder that because our Blessed Mother is always faithful to her promises, does not make them lightly, but takes them very seriously. Hopefully, you really want to be saved. There's nothing else that matters, St. Alphonsus tells us, except the salvation of our soul. And here is a sure path guaranteed by the sinless, impeccable, perfect, most beautiful mother of God herself, that if we are devoted to her immaculate heart, she will lead us there. And she has that power because God's given it to her. So this is why devotion to the immaculate heart is so important and at the heart of Fatima. And this is why it's not optional. And this is why it's not a private revelation because God wants this for everyone. He wants this for you and for me. I mean, very briefly, because I gave a whole talk on it, you might catch it, but I would say very briefly, it makes perfect sense if you think about it, because when you're devoted to the Immaculate Heart, ultimately what that does is that makes your heart more and more like her heart. So the more devoted you are to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the more you will be like Mary. And Mary is God's perfect creation. And Mary is the one that God loves more than anything else. We could put all the love that God has for all the angels and all of his creation and you and me, and if there was a divine scale and we put it on one side, the love he has for Mary is far greater. So why wouldn't God want us to be more and more and more like her immaculate heart? So that there's more and more of that divine love in the world. In fact, if we make it to heaven, if we make it to heaven, our soul will be as much like the immaculate heart as it can be there in heaven when we enjoy the beatific vision. And so God's trying to speed that up. He wants to love us more, but he's saying, be like my mother, because that's the most perfect creation. And that's what the devotion of the immaculate heart does. Again, this is why it's not optional. This is why it's at the essence of the gospel and why all must embrace it and accept it. So she says, uh, I promise salvation to those who embrace it and their souls will be loved by God as flowers placed by myself to adorn his throne. Would that not inspire us every morning when we wake up to say, I want to be one of those flowers on our Lord's throne placed there by his own mother? I don't know if you know the story. It's a wonderful little story. I think it's called uh, Take It to the Queen. Children wrote it. She actually took it from a saint that wrote it in his book. But it's nice because the people have to come to a king and they have nothing to offer. And all they can really offer is this kind of putrid apple that's sort of half eaten. Yeah, allusions to the Garden of Eden. But they don't know what to do. And so they take it to the queen. And the queen then cuts it up very nice in these little pieces and puts it on a beautiful golden plate and dresses herself up in her greatest finery. And then she goes and presents that to the king. And the king can no longer refuse this because it's presented by his most beautiful queen. Even though the apple itself might not mean that much, even though you and I might not be that much, we're small. But when the queen presents it, then it becomes that much more pleasing to our Lord. So that's what this devotion in Immaculate Heart is doing in these flowers that Our Lady is placing our souls there. And she promises Lucia that she will never leave her, even though Lucia is going to suffer a lot and it's going to be very difficult. She reminds her, my Immaculate Heart will be your refuge and the way that will lead you to God. And so again, I say, think of those words being told to you. She's trying to tell you, I will never leave you. My Immaculate Heart is meant to be your refuge and I will be the way that will lead you to God because she knows that way. 
Much more could be said about that apparition, but since time presses us on, we'll mention July 13th, which some people think is the most important day. So there's a, a most important apparition. There's reasons for that. That's when she revealed the great secret of Fatima, which came in three parts. And the first part, I'm actually going to read this to you from Father DeMarchi's book, is the vision of hell. Perhaps you've heard it, but it's still sobering. Our Lady speaking. Sacrifice yourself for sinners and say often, especially when you make some sacrifice. Here's another prayer we should memorize. Oh my Jesus, it is for love of thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for sins committed against the immaculate heart of Mary, that I offer this sacrifice for thee. So whatever, you got to wash dishes, you hit a red light, you stub your toe, you lose your job, you're working in the refinery, whatever it might be. You can offer up this prayer and offer up whatever it is that's taking place. So learn that prayer and offer everything up with it. As Our Lady said these words, she opened her hands again as she had done the other two previous months. The light reflecting from them seemed to penetrate into the earth. So the earth is opening up and we see what's inside. And we saw as if into a sea of fire. And immersed in that fire were devils and souls with human form as if they were transparent black or bronze embers floating in the fire and swayed by the flames that issued from within themselves along with great clouds of smoke falling upon every side just like the falling of sparks in great fires without weight or equilibrium amid wailing and cries of pain and despair that horrified and shook with terror. We could distinguish the devils by their horrible and repulsive figures of frightful and unknown animals, but transparent as the black coals in fire. It is worth meditating upon the vision of hell often because we do not want to go there. And I tell you, we don't want anyone to go there. We don't want anyone to go there. God can mete out sufficient justice in this world and in purgatory that we don't want anyone to go there. Frightened, deathly pale, the little ones raised their eyes to Our Lady for help. As Lucia cried out, oh, Our Lady. They later on said that if our Blessed Mother hadn't been there, they would have died from fright if she hadn't already told them that she was going to take them to heaven. Then Our Lady continues, you have seen hell, where the souls of poor sinners go. Okay, so there's a hell, and the souls of sinners go there. To save them, God wills to establish throughout the world the devotion to my Immaculate Heart. There we're back at the center of Fatima. If people will do what I tell you, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. The war is going to end. This is the Great War. She appears in the midst of World War I when all hope seems lost for mankind and we're destroying each other in this war like we'd never done before. But if they do not stop offending God, another worse war will break out in the reign of Pius XI, She's already prophesying. Pius XI hasn't come around. No one knows who the next pope will be at this time, or what name he would take for that matter. When you see a night illumined by an unknown light, which happened on January 25th, 1938. Interestingly, Hitler also saw this light. He was quite superstitious, was interested in North mythology, and he took it as his own sign and his own omen that he was supposed to affect the Anschluss, invade Austria, Austria start invading Poland, you know. So all that is coming, and, and Hitler himself takes that as a sign. It was seen all over the, West, the Northern Hemisphere and into the Southern Hemisphere as well. This unknown light, which some people have mistakenly called an aurora borealis, they only say that because they don't have any other name for it, but it wasn't an aurora borealis. It was something that was unknown. It was supernatural, never been seen before. Sister Lucia did confirm that, by the way. Know that this is the great sign that God gives you, that he is going to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, hunger, persecution of the church, and of the Holy Father. So these are conditional prophecies that Our Lady is giving, although we've already seen them come to pass. To forestall this, I come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart, and the communion of reparation on first Saturdays. So this is Our Lady's twofold solution, which must be implemented. The consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart and the communion of reparation on first Saturdays, which is also focused on the Immaculate Heart. Remember, God wills to establish devotion in the world to the Immaculate Heart. These are the two privileged means that carry superabundant grace by which that will be affected. 